Hello and welcome to the aftermath of the Spurs game. So we all went, didn't we? Uh, it's about oh, what's yes. the time? Da, 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 about half six. So we've literally just jumped on the call. I'm going to react to it now. Obviously, I'm pretty buzzing. Your guys' thoughts? How are you feeling at the moment? Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah, oh, right. it was an alright game. I was absolutely <laughs> buzzing. Absolutely, I've been buzzing for the last two hours or how <laughs> long it's been since the final whistle. Oh, absolutely God. buzzing. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. It was probably the best atmosphere I've seen at St. Mary's for a long, long time. We have been chatting so. But it was just, it was great to see the fact that uh, Ings just had the defence on strings and turned into Gascoigne for 10 seconds, which was brilliant. <laughs> and uh, Stevens being solid in defence. It was just uh, all round. Everyone had a good game today. It was, it was just brilliant to watch. I, I I was confident, but I didn't think we were going to get that sort of performance today. So, mm. is there anything else you guys kind of uh, your immediate reactions to that? What were you What were you thinking after seeing that? Before? Redmond looked confident on the ball, which is nice. Uh, mm. Hassan, who's I think better manager than Mourinho will ever be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think. Well, Redmond to me, he still looked he looked better, but I think he's nowhere near at his best. I think he's still got a way to go. In terms of because we've seen him at better, I think he was turning over possession. But there was, I think, everyone else pretty much had a a, a good game. Again, Cedric sometimes uh, passes a little bit astray, but in, yeah, everyone else on the pitch had a, a brilliant game, and I don't think really could be faulted. I think there was, yeah, from Redmond and Cedric, I think everyone had a brilliant game. It, I think Gineppo Gineppo struggled at times, but he didn't have a bad game. Like he, didn't, he didn't really do much. He committed a couple of fouls, got booked, and then substituted. But it doesn't mean he had a bad game. He just no. he wasn't as impactful as he was when he came on off the bench against Crystal Palace. I think he just got a bit too much into it. If that makes sense, like yeah. he lost his head a little bit. Mm. Um, so, but apart from that, yeah, we got to have a look at the individual performances, right? Look at who had an amazing game. Your man of the match. Who was your guys' man of the match? Um, that's tough. James Will Prowse had another great game. I think I saw yeah. a tweet somewhere from, ironically, Statman Dave again. I think he had 14 recoveries, nine tackles successful. And his 50 50 challenge with Sizoko was something else. Yeah. How he, was, he was able just to fold up Sizoko with that 50 50 challenge. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. Well, everyone had a really good game. Like he says, everyone mm. has a pretty decent game. Obviously, Danny Ings' confidence is flowing through him at the moment. Obviously, the Gascoigne flick, and then he just he had time to <laughs> like he had, he had time to bring it down and just slot it home, but he just smacked it in like half volley with with his weak foot. Yeah, he slowed down, but he knew something else. He knew where to put it. That was the best thing. I was mm. really because he kind of hesitated for a little bit. Well, not hesitated. He broke his stride and then just mm. it, it just shows how much confidence he's in because. It almost it didn't look like a brilliant connection, but it still went in the back of the net, and that's just because his confidence is, like you said, flowing mm. through him. So, yeah, what what a uh, god, yeah, what a result. I mean, I was just loving it. the 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 whole game, the fans were brilliant, and instead of being nervy, they got behind the team as well, and it meant we heard some of the loudest chanting we've had for a, a long time, getting behind the players rather than creating that nervous atmosphere. Well, what can I say? I've joined the Northern for the last two games and the atmosphere is better than it's ever been before. Yeah. It's the impact that I have. <laughs> no, I think it's Lloyd. I don't think it's you. Yeah. He, he is a loud man, I must say. Context. He's a loud man. dead. Um, yes. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh, God, I, I, I can't really, I don't know where to really head with this because I'm just really happy with the result. Can someone steer it in some sort Should of direction? Should we go at the direction? start? So when we saw go the lineup, it. it was... Shane Long was on the bench, only had one out and out striker and Danny. What are your thoughts, you know, starting this game, how he finished the Crystal Palace one? Um, I thought it looked a very good team. You know how I feel about Armstrong. I think he's brilliant. Um, for us, I think he just makes a really good impact. I think that, but the fact that we had Ings and Redmond up together, my one concern was we've been playing with at least one target man or someone, one person to hold up the ball and it didn't look like we had it. I think, Ralph obviously was looking at it and thinking uh, the two centre-back parents of Tottenham are quite slow for pace, so we'll try and beat them for pace. Um, and obviously that did happen for one of the goals, Ings getting in behind. I think Redmond looked a little bit... He had a quite a few foot races today and didn't really come out on tops. Um, I don't know whether... 
Uh, I don't know whether that was just me or he was just generally behind for those, but I think there was a few chances where he was trying to get in behind and didn't really get round there. So, I, again, I, I'm not too confident with uh, Redmond in that striker position. I just don't think it suits him that well. Um, but you've got to say it was effective and it worked. That was just my one concern, seeing those two together. Midfield and defence-wise, I was more than happy. How, are you, how did you guys feel about the... Team I like having that stable back four. I mean, I know people aren't massive fans of Stevens, but I thought he was probably our best defender today. Oh, yeah. Um, him and Bednarek were absolute warriors in there. They stopped everything. Cedric, I thought, probably had his best game of the season today. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. I agree. Bertrand, Bertrand overlapped very well, especially when Redmond went onto the left hand side. Their partnership were linked up very well, and I thought he overlapped well as too, because it was his cross that hit Alderweireld's arm, which. Who knows how that was in a penalty, but... Oh, God, yeah, even the fact that they, they checked it. And... Oh, right, we'll cover that later. Okay, right, carry on. So, uh, first, first team thing sheet, that happened... Team sheet. <laughs> uh, well, team sheet, we think we covered that. First thing yeah, that happened yeah. was McCarthy saved from Harry Kane's deflected shots. Mm. I think that was... Oh, a, right, yeah, that was... That was a yeah. worldie of a save. And yeah. the keeper will be talked about for ages, because... Like, that was a massive deflection. He'd already dived to get the shot, and he managed to reach up and tip his hand onto it, tip around the post for a corner. Oh, it was an absolute... Yeah. It's a, that's a game-changing moment as well, because if they go one and up at that point, it's a completely different game. And that's when we have to... It's in and Tottenham are completely that's what I, at that point. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. That sort of... Say, from, from the angle that I saw, I didn't even see the reflection until you know I watched it back from the, the replays on, on YouTube. Yes, it's, it's a great save. Made even better after I saw that it was deflected as well. Yeah. And then um, the goal. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, we had the Resman chance as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Resman's no, chance. No, I've he, written he this off on Stanford's Twitter page. And oh, they, right. <laughs> yeah, the Redman chance. Uh, yeah, yeah no, right. Redman took on a couple of players, and I think that's what he brings very well, is him cutting inside, taking on players. And it was quite nice to see that there was a lot of movement between Redman and Gineppo and Ings and Armstrong. Like They were rotating quite heavily. Uh, Cedric got forward and had a header just wide of the post as well, just before yeah. that. Too. Yeah, uh, really good cross from Bertrand. Um, so it, it was really nice to see that we were committing men forward and putting Tottenham under pressure. Definitely, we yeah. weren't scared of him. Was it definitely a four-four-two that we were playing today? Yes. Just because yeah, it felt, it felt when I like when it. I saw the team sheet, I was thinking, is this a four-two-three-one? Because, yeah. but it looked like you know you'd get that movement between Armstrong, Gineppo, and Redmond, but. No, I guess it was, yeah. It did. Redmond was definitely up high and we were trying to exploit those in getting in behind. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it worked effectively, didn't it? Danny Ings getting in behind. Um, but the you don't inspect him to pull that off, do you? We've, we've got to appreciate that is, that is special. That is a, a special goal. Great we've ball seen. by Stevens. Also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that yeah. That's very true. Yeah, He's now got two more assists than Jesse Lingard did this season. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole of the season, oh, wow. but yeah, um, was the was the Deli Ali was the Deli Ali penalty shout before the goal? Oh, Try there was so do. many years before, it was... after, during every like there was like three penalty shouts. I think Deli Ali had because I, I also the, the one that was more not not a stone wall, but like because of what Mourinho said after the game when he got classes, I was concerned that that was going to be given as a penalty because against Norwich, Harry Kane was taken out in a very similar fashion, and I thought. Well, this is going to be taken to VAR. What's going to happen? And they, they would have looked at it, but I thought it was a lot. They took a lot less time than I expected them to. Yeah, to and VAR was, was on our thing. side today, wasn't it? Well, there was a few once again. Yeah, I know. But uh, you got to say that the Harry Kane offside, the fact that how long they looked at it must have meant they got the old lines out and had a. Yeah. Uh, had a little look to see well, whether... The thing is, on the Sky highlights, it didn't even come up, so I don't even know if it was that close or not. No, it, I don't know, but... So I actually haven't seen it back. And I bet the linesman's chuffed, because the, the fact that they took about a minute and a half to have a look at it and see whether Harry Kane was actually offside must have meant it was very, very close. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there we go. The linesman did call it. That was offside. Didn't we get another one? There was a penalty check. Obviously, the, the one for us it, didn't, it was, it didn't was go never for it. A penalty. The Alex, Alex McCarthy diving at Dele feet. He got the mm. ball cleanly. Mm. Never a penalty at all. I don't even know why they checked it because 
That's why I only took like twenty seconds because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I I wasn't expecting them to give it. I I felt like there's a chance because when you see that thing on the screen, you're yeah, like, oh god, here it comes. Oh yeah. no, but I wouldn't have. I didn't think so. Let's go back to the goal. Like what? Go, what for it, yeah. through? go chronologically. What do yeah. you think? What What were the thoughts running through your mind? Is it, the ball gets flicked over the. Yeah. Oh, well, you can... oh, Gascoigne, no oh, brilliant. Oh, yes, went through my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just, it was amazing. Like, he was running down the northern, so me and Tiz would have seen him come across. But yeah. everyone was going absolutely mental around me. Like, because it's just such a brilliant individual piece of skill that it gets everyone off their feet and cheering. And that gets mm. the crowd raising. Even the players themselves are hyped because it was such a good goal. And past and, Toby Alderweireld as well, one of yeah, the sliding on his knees in Europe. Mm. Yeah, like he and, completely didn't. And you you look throughout <laughs> that team and you're saying two world class centre backs have been taken out of the game. Harry Kane was marked out of the game by Jack Stevens. There is no excuse now that if everyone has a good game and performs well and is full of confidence, there's no talent to what you can do. Uh, yeah. it, it's I, I I've. I said it before. I don't think if you're in this league, I don't think there's bad players. It's just confidence-wise, and there's people that are on loads of confidence, like Leicester, or people who are at the bottom and aren't aren't performing well just because of confidence. Like most most people in this league have the potential to be great, if not world-class players. It's just the confidence they have and the consistency that they have. That's all it is, really. Look at Jack Stevens, like. What was it six months ago? People were saying that he should be nowhere near the first team. Well, now, six saying, weeks ago, people were saying he should be nowhere. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, now he's become our best, probably one of the best centre backs we've got. I mean, badnerak has been consistent, but Stevens, for me, was he probably man of the match today. Maybe if not, War Prowse. But mm-hmm. being that last line of defence, and uh, I remember Kane being through on Stevens just coming straight through and smacking it out for. Uh, a throw in exactly what we needed. Running that line as well. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Him holding the line and getting everyone in the right place. Being that leader that we need. And he's really taken that role, I think. I, I think that suits him really well. That you can see he's the one telling everyone to get up and get in that line. And that's so important if we're playing this this high line and this higher line of engagement. You need that. You need that um, leadership. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going off on a rant again, but it's just because I'm really happy with the performance. I, yeah, I don't know where to go. Right, sorry, back to order. Right, where are we going? Where are we going now? We we only going to give the Danny Ings goal thirty seconds. That's well. How long? If, how long if, that, if that goal was scored, if that goal was scored one day before, forget Boothell's ridiculous goal against West Brom. That would have been goal of the decade. This. Or at least top five. At least top five. Yeah, it should have been going long. It should have been long. In the ten, when they have that video released on the 31st of December 2029, mm. that will be in the top five. And because <laughs> that was a ridiculous... Like, it's just it's just the confidence, like I said. It's the confidence that yeah. he has now. And I am petrified of him getting injured. I know I said a few this... podcasts ago that we said I've said that... You know, we, we can play we can play with Alison, but I don't want to play with Alison because he's that in, he is that imperative to the mm. size. It's also the audacity and the arrogance mm. to flick it over Toby Alderweireld's head, yeah. and then not that's... even not even wet. And Gazaniga just doesn't move, which just makes the goal even better. Yeah, yeah. that's brilliant. Um, oh, it, it, it's sorry, I should get on mic, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I I can't I can't believe the fact that. He's just so full of confidence at the moment that that's not even a second thought. You know, mm. that is, that's him naturally saying, well, I'll just flick it over a, a world-class <laughs> centre-back. You know, that's no, what that, that's the the first hockey. instinct. Hockey because nice. Anyone that's played football, no, if you're full of confidence, you don't think. You're just you doing what that. comes natural to you. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and that, that's what he's thinking. He's got the talent and saying, I'm going to flick it over this, this centre-back, this world-class centre-back, and put it on the volley in the back of the net it's just it's brilliant to see we've got that calibre of striker up front now and like Tiz says it's imperative that now we can keep him as fit as possible and that's possibly why he came off early because mm. we saw him I think he had a he bit of a knock started. and he I was what yeah towards the end of the game, so. and I, I was he North went down for a little bit and yeah I was a little bit worried a little inch of effort into that game so yeah that's true 
But now we've got a bit of a break now, haven't we? We can do a rotation side against uh, Huddersfield. Huddersfield, and uh, hopefully he can be keep his form and uh, have a bit more fitness coming back into the game as well. But well, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything else you want to cover about that goal? I know it was a brilliant goal. Is yeah, it? for for that, I just I, I just <laughs> I just said that because I think yeah, that's it was just the goal of the game because it was one. <laughs> <laughs> the goal of the game, fantastic. That's true. No, that is true. <laughs> it wasn't the goal of the game. Um, we've we've I, now I, I won think, the equal most Premier League games this decade, which I think is astounding. <laughs> oh, oh wow, that's I like uh, JB so stats that. last podcast. <laughs> Jack, Jack Stevens, like I, I know, like you compare him to Van Dijk, but he can spray the ball around as well. Oh. No, but he can. No, he has. He's he, got. He can spray that ball around the park very easily, and he's very accurate at it too. So, it's like Bednarak's distribution's not as good as, as Stevens. Stevens does has good good di- distribution, and I think his stint. Uh, didn't he play CDM at some point as well? Because he is just really comfortable on the ball. I don't think he ever did, but people were wanting him to play there because he, he, you know he always had a mistake in him, but he just yeah. never. But it, it's like he's he's got so much confidence, and also if if he has the ball at his feet and the space in front of him, he'll drive into that space and he'll yeah. use that space effectively. Yeah. I mean, wasn't it like he went on a run? It was at the end of last season. And he went on a run from the edge of the six-yard six box all the way down to the other end. And won a kick. Did he do it a couple of games ago against Palace? He oh, started yeah, he in the half right, and at and Palace as well. Threw, <laughs> threw about two or three players and got to the, got to the byline and put it across yeah. goal. Like, yeah. He's got the potential to do that, and all you need is either Warprouse or Hoiberg to have the mentality just to fill in for him. And he's a threat going through those channels or yeah. going through the going through the lines. And Maybe ent- we have to play with overlapping centre backs like Sheffield United. Yeah. Oh, it's working for them. Why didn't it work? For us? There you go. But yeah, uh, uh, should we try and get back onto uh, go on to order? Sorry. Did, did anything else happen in that half after Danny Ings's beautiful yeah. goal? You had Armstrong's header, which was quite mm. comfortably caught by Gazaniga. I think there was nearly a cut back that went in as well. Oh, yeah. The, Armstrong Was it Redmond? Sh- it was Redmond Shot. Armstrong, Armstrong was on the right side, cut mm. inside, and it got blocked by, I think, all the viral as well. Mm. Yeah, all the exciting stuff happened. What about that Cedric header? Was there a Cedric header in the first yeah, half? Or that was um, before the goal. Uh, oh, Cedric right. Header yeah. Wide. yeah, headed wide. To be fair, he could have done a little bit better there, but I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Tottenham oh. did snatch at quite a few chances. Like they did have quite a few half chances, but mm. in the first half, but nothing really to speak about. And I think that's quite a lot down to how well we defended. But one thing I was concerned about in the first half, we seemed to give their attacking players so much space in our in our half. I felt there's quite a lot of times that we we sort of sat out, sat off them, and quite clearly it works. We didn't we didn't concede, and we didn't really concede a high quality chance apart from Harry Kane's shot. They did seem to get quite a bit, of, quite a bit of space. Mm. Uh, uh, but that could that could be one of two things because that could be like them playing a good pass and us just not being like ready for it. Or yeah. cause when we do have a tendency when we press, we press very quickly with a lot of players, and then that does leave gaps. So if like Hoiberg or Ward Prowse, one of them goes, and that all of a sudden leaves one in the midfield, and that creates a lot of gaps. So if yeah. they manage to play through the press. We're in a bit of trouble. And there was so, a couple of times that they did actually do that, but yeah. we were good enough to actually regain possession and have the uh, the strength in defence as well, just to hold them up for enough time to get our midfield back again. Yeah. And I think I think for me, uh, I don't know who actually got the man of the match, but for me, it's got to either be between Warprouse because he, in this system, he's got to be everywhere, and he was today, mm-hmm. and the difference in his. For, you know, getting the first ball, getting the second ball is completely different to what we've been seeing, like we said, three, four weeks ago. It's that confidence and that ability that he's battling and he's not he's not thinking. He's got the confidence to know what he has to do. And uh, we saw Dan, that today. Danny was given man of the match by BBC. Oh, really? OK. But yes, um, he scored. And yeah, and he did well. Um, but I think you, you, you have a look at it, the actual performances and Stevens basically ensured our clean sheet today because he he was solid at the back. He, he he took the pressure off and was confident in his own passing and um, dribbling on the ball. He could uh, he knew when to put it out. He knew when to 
clear the danger. He was setting the line. He was communicating. You know, he did everything he needed to. And he, he, sweep, he sweeped up very well uh, where others made mistakes. He was mm. there to sweep it mm. up. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, it, it, we're, we're nowhere near on that. We're not... Uh, being very uh, chronological like normal, but I just, I just, I just want to, you know, the the we passion and the the, uh, points, the, the di- performance we've way. seen from these different players. Like I want to talk about it, and I think that should, we should, we should talk about them. Like I don't think we should just go all all straight in line because these players they've done so well in the short amount of time to turn around and have these performances. It it's almost like you wouldn't believe it if you told it to to us and went back in the time machine and told us all, oh, I don't know, four weeks ago, we're going to be up to 11th this, you know, Warprouse and Hoiberg are going to be running midfield and uh, you know, it, all these different performances, like Armstrong as well I, I can't sing his praises enough because he didn't have an absolute brilliant game today, but I think in the first 10 minutes he already made more of an impact than Buffal did at Crystal Palace or at, in the Crystal Palace game the fact that he's so direct, he finds the passes, he knows where the space is, and he's working out on uh, wide at the moment. But I think he is more of a that in the in the whole number ten. But he mm. still makes an impact where he's been playing at the moment. So not only is he being a good squad player and playing where he's being told, but he still makes an impact wherever he is. And I think, you know, uh, I made a ridiculous prediction at the start of the season that I, he was going to be our best player this season, but. I think he is starting to make an impact on the team, and I was happy to see him in the lineup um, when it came out because I knew he was going to make an impact, and we we needed that directness and uh, that vision that he possesses. So, yeah, uh, again, another player that had a really good performance today. Well, well, as a wise man tweeted about thirty-five minutes ago, since we right. lost nine 0 to Leicester, I think everything's changed. Our formations changed, and the, the biggest thing for me is. We've now got people that we can see care about playing for the club. Yeah. Before the nine nil and before that, people weren't getting carried in the team, but it was a bit not it was it was a bit, you know, people didn't really care that much about playing. As in the effort levels weren't there, but you, as you saw today, people cared for every challenge they put in, every 50-50, every time they shield the ball out for a goal kick, smash the ball into a Tottenham player for, for a goal kick or a throw in. People care about playing for the club now and it's put passion mm. and pride back into the shirt. And that, that's all Southampton fans really ask for that you put 110% in because we're not expecting the, the best players. We had that three, four, five years ago. All we want really is players that want to play for the club and that's what we've got now. And that's not what I expected eight weeks ago when we we were getting beaten left, right and centre and yeah. embarrassed, if any, if nothing else. Mm. And all it comes down is, like I've said it before, it's confidence. Like Ward Prowse mm. hasn't been, you know, there hasn't been changes in his abilities in the last four weeks. It's purely just the mental side of it. And having such a devastating loss as the Leicester was it's almost like it can't get worse it was like the bottom and I'm uh, you've got to give credit to Ralph in the fact that he's he's turned it around and obviously changed them mentally to have a positive outlook and they've built on every success they've had so far I mean the fact that we went away to Arsenal had a good result I knew we drew but it looks like the team took the positives from that and we built on it and we've cut and built and built and built and now we've beaten Tottenham at home uh, from the the like you said the nine nil Leicester loss and the fact that we're saying gone. You you also have to give credit to Gao and Cat and everyone behind the board as well because some boards would have just sacked yeah uh, after the nine nil and the fact that they kept mm. faith in him knew that there was something being built at the club at that point. Mm-hmm. It's cast them as well because they did keep him around. They didn't just pull the trigger, which would have been the easy option in that way because. We lost nine nil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The justification was there. Yeah. Yeah. I would have questioned it. Like mm. no. just lost nine nil. But it's, it's credit to everyone at the club to actually turn around and then like we've gone from nine nil defeat looking to be relegated to now eleventh in the table. Yeah. So yeah, we we talk we'll talk about this now. But well, I don't want to skip over the FA Cup game because it is my favourite competition. But now we've got Leicester afterwards and after after we've been talking about getting battered nine nil, I've now get, I've got confidence going into that game. But what we can't do is think that we're out of the relegation battle. I know it's 
it goes right in this way for Norwich are winning last time I checked. I've not seen the score now. Aston Villa won. Yeah, they're winning one, yeah. one. We need to just make sure that we know that we're still battling against it because we're, we're 11th, but only a matter of points below us is the relegation zone. But we're also only five points off of Europe. So yeah, that's yeah. Sounds, the same. I know it sounds stupid, but literally a win as difficult as it sounds but a win against Leicester we did it there last season and we're, we're in continental contention <laughs> yeah and that's the thing if you're in good spirits you're going to be looking at the fact that you're six points closer to Europa not six points away from relegation just because the mentality yeah. you've got and now other teams that had the mentality like us of that sinking feeling the fact that they can't get away from it are going to start hitting I mean Burnley, you always think of them as a solid side, but now they've gone and lost to who was it? Villa. They lost two one to yeah. Villa. Villa have been terrible in the last three or four games, like, and yeah. now they've lost to them. So Burnley are being dragged into it, four points away from the relegation zone. Uh, Bournemouth, load of um, injuries. They're currently getting spanked four nil by West Ham. So it's four now. Yes, yeah, four nil. I'm just looking at it now, and uh, yeah, they're being four nil. Just still beating Palace at the moment, but who? Sorry, Norwich. That'd be a big thing. I'm a massive itch. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Palace are up in ninth, so that's the thing with this with this league. And you know, if we just string a couple of wins together, everyone's beating everyone else. Yes, so we we can. In all fairness, like we can push for Europe this year. Like I know, like it mm. really does sound weird, but we can. Yeah, we can. We can push. We can push from what was expected of us four weeks ago, if nothing mm. else. Yeah, it's just the fact that we can't get two highs in our highs because if, if we then sat, if we do lose two in a row we, we could drop far so I don't want us to get too low in our lows if that does happen what that's my only thinking behind it no I'm just I'm just saying I, <laughs> I I'm, 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 I'm a happy clapper I completely yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It, but but, that, that is the way that because we're coming off with four games unbeaten now three wins in our last four we've beaten Chelsea and Tottenham over the Christmas period one away <laughs> one at home you know you're, you're thinking like because it's such a positive mindset to have, yeah, we can push on from this. And well, yeah. I, I was saying this to my mum after the game, is that when when um, Kuman was in charge and we came sixth, we didn't have a good start to the season. It's the fact that we had a very good Christmas period and we bounced on from that. It's now yeah. important to bounce on from this Christmas period, take the confidence, get results, and we can push up. And Definitely. we can catch Spurs, United, Wolves, like... Sheffield yeah. United having an incredible season with four points off them. So yeah. it's yeah. Should we get back to the second half? Like I know we've been nah. we've been <laughs> crazy. Have we got what's the well, fun in that? What can we get? Is there anything that we need to cover in the second half of particular penalty. note? Well, the penalty that should have been a penalty. Yeah, should have been. Penalty. Would have waving at uh, Nicola Cortese in the uh, in the yeah. section. Yeah. Cortese. I don't know. Cortese. <laughs> Does it come up in a while? Um, uh, he could have been though. Just... No. <laughs> um, but yeah, that probably should have been a pen. I don't know how long they had to look at it and then realise that's not a penalty. Like they had a decent they, look they at it. Look, they looked at it for about ten seconds. I would have thought like that's how mm. long the purple thing was up there. Mm. Um, it, yeah, I think my I, <laughs> my dean probably looked at it and went, uh, "Do you know what? It, either way, if it's penalty or not, just don't give it." I, I would not be surprised if something like that happened because he is very um, arrogant, as Mike Dean, and he, yeah. he likes making his own decisions. He doesn't like the technology, so yeah. I, he, he seems like a very arrogant man. So uh, yeah, Mourinho uh, got booked. I don't know what what exactly for, but... right, allegedly, all right, just yeah, yeah. Right allegedly, allegedly, he though. was looking at our tactics board. I saw a photo. Have you seen the photo? Yeah, no, I've I've seen the photo, photo, but I don't know whether it's at, he actually got booked for that or well, whether I that think, was just. I a... think he got booked for looking at our tactics board. I haven't seen the photo, but that's what I saw. <laughs> what what he was so. in the interview after was something about being rude to one of our coaches. So I don't know if he was looking at it or he was whispering something in his ear. It might have been that, but it did mm. look like he was looking at the tactics. Yeah, but um, either way, that is finally in the the uh, the chance afterwards about Mourinho were quite uh, unsavoury. Uh, <laughs> they were they were they were they were funny as well. Yeah, I they must, were. I must say, you got to say. Were, and, and the unsavory. best thing about it, the moment that Mourinho got booked, a firework went off after the uh, behind the stadium as well. <laughs> it was like a little mini celebration. The fact that Mourinho got booked. It was typical. It's typical. I'm looking at the highlights now. It's typical Mike Dean game with the amount of yellow cards going on. But. Yeah. 
I also uh, another thing that I need, needs to be respected is the substitutions we made today. Absolutely, mm. I, I I couldn't have picked. You know, like sometimes you've gone, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. I think they were done. They were nailed. Like um, Gineppo was losing his head in the game. He got a yellow yeah. card. Um, he he looked like he was just lost his head a little bit. So Ralph had the you know saw it and said, right, pull him off. Shane Long. You know, again, I thought Redmond wasn't particularly that much of a danger up front. So pull Redmond to the left. You know, he can cut in on his right. So that's going to be a good thing. And Shane Long's a brilliant panic button. Play that ball up top. He can either win it or you know that he can draw the the, uh, the foul and just slow the game down. I think that was uh, Shane Long was used absolutely perfectly in that in that way. Uh, the, um, when, when he came on, he did the job very well. He did the, held up the ball exactly well. He did to him, yeah. Really, really tested Vertonghen and all the viral for pace yeah. as well at the back. Yeah, caused Gazaniki to slip over while kicking the ball. It, yeah. it was just a marvelous performance. Yeah, that's true. When he went out, so and I don't know if you guys thought this. Do you think Redman still? kind of got a bit of a niggle or some sort of injury because I don't think he looked we know he's quick but I think especially with some of the um, you know trying to get in behind out of viral of the tongue and he didn't look like he had that kind of explosive pace that we kind of think about him it, it might just be the amount of fixtures that we've had recently Possibly, yeah you know, yeah. Get, getting a play has he done has he started all three games he's, he's had, started every game lot, that's a lot of minutes yeah, in the, the last three days especially for a winger like as a central midfielder or defender it's it's not easy to play that amount of games but you're not sprinting well, tracking I think, the covering role I think it's it's still, it's quite it, difficult, it, isn't it, it depends it's, it's on difficult the it's not, as well as, you, look, yeah. you look at Ward Prowse he's running a natural machine every yeah. single but he's running the most in the game for yeah. you know, that, he ran like four kilometers more than everyone else. He's naturally fit, so he can do that. Or yeah. some because Redmond is down to explosive pace. Yeah. That's a lot harder to do over yeah. and over and over again instead of War Prowse's cardio. So that like that that um that probably affects him quite well because he has to be explosive every single sprint that he does. So that I think that might just be the fixtures catching up on. I wouldn't be surprised if he's rested for Huddersfield. Combined, combined with that, Redmond started all three. On the other side, we've not had a player starting each game. You had Armstrong starting against Chelsea, then Buffal starting against uh, Crystal Palace, and then Armstrong yeah. once again starting starting mm. against um, uh, Tottenham. Tottenham, yeah. Tottenham again today. Like they, they've had a break, so. Looking comparatively, and also, like I said a few podcasts ago, you can't expect the level of performance every week that Resmond had at the back end of last season because he was probably in the best form of his life then as well. Yeah. So it's 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 difficult. But I think I think he's he's had a, a solid string of games. I think he's had a, more of an impact in the last three than he did in the opening eighteen as well. So I, th- I think he's had a good string of games, and I imagine a lot of players will get rested. I know we'll talk about it more the pre- in the preview, but I imagine a lot of players will get rested because of the amount of players we've got as backups. Yeah, that's true. I think you'll get a run of a lot of youth and players that haven't particularly given themselves a reason to be picked. I think mm. Buffal almost gets picked because there's no other great op. You know, like if we're in a poor run of form, people want to see him because he makes something out of nothing. However, yeah. we're in really good form at the moment, and I think Armstrong's proven himself as a player yeah. that should be played at the moment, and yeah. that's the fact that Buffal gets held behind. So I wouldn't be surprised if Buffal plays to show something and say, look, here's a championship side, go and prove yourself and show me why you should be playing. Because that's oh. what you should use it for, isn't it? You, it should be a proof of show me something in this game, and that should reflect in the scoreline as well. I honestly would not be surprised to see if... If we get a significant bid for Buffal in January, I would not mm. be surprised to see him go. Like, no. I, uh, like I understand people love him, and like on this day, he is probably the best player in our team. But yeah. he just doesn't fit the system. He's not a worker. He's not a lad who's going to sprint fifty yards back and win the ball. That's no. not who he is, and that that's my problem with Buffal is that I know that he won't do the work off the ball. Sorry, I'm just laughing because I can see Buffal, uh, shirt on the back of Tizard's wall. <laughs> so it, it just makes me laugh. But um, DM no. for inquiries. <laughs> if, um... <laughs> oh, I've got a battery thing. Oh no, please don't say. Oh, my battery might go. But what I was, I think with Buffal, I think he wants to prove himself and stay. That I think that's the difference with it. That I think he'll want to stay because I think yeah. he, he 
he appreciates how the high percentage of fans that like him. In January, I'm not. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, lots of things. Really. You know. Yeah, that's true. But I also think I was thinking about it as well. We've got the FA Cup, and then we've got a bit of break before Leicester, don't we? I wouldn't be surprised if we see some new people. If we are trying to get people in, I wouldn't be surprised if we're trying to get. I think a right back is necessary. Uh, I was looking at Cedric today. He had it one of his better games, but by no means was that a brilliant performance by him. I think he was. He did enough, but I don't think he was brilliant. I thought he was. I thought he played. Yeah, I thought he played well. I, I, I've I've really? got very li- yeah. I've got very little um. Very mm. little. Game, he just... did uh, defensively. He did well, but I just think. Look, sometimes I, I like, know, you I look know. Dif- the difference between Bertrand and Gineppo and Armstrong and Cedric. Bertrand's bursting down that wing. He's creating those overlaps. He's comfortable on the ball. Whereas Cedric, it seems like the only thing he can do is play that ball line. I just, I just think you can get so much. There could be so much more attacking wise from that right back, and we know in this league how important a right back is. I thought he delivered quite a few good uh, crosses in today. I, I think he only had one or two, but I think he crossed the ball quite well today. He jumped well. He won aerial battles, which is something that yeah, he was yeah, doing yeah. before. I, um, and like, I, I know I go on about a lot. WhoScored.com, my favourite website, actually oh. rated him as a 7.1 overall. Uh, so, but that was, game. was, so that was saying that he, with the rest of the team, though. Compared to with the rest of the team, he had a better rating than Bertrand, Gineppo, Armstrong, Redmond. Like, compared to most other players, he had a very good game. I thought Cedric was fine. I, I thought he was a solid right back, and I think we need to get the best out of him for as long as we have him. Oh yeah, and I 100% agree with you. While we still got him, by all means, like if he's going to be performing well, I'm not going to disagree with that. And I'm going to, yeah, it's I'm going to back him. It's not a I'm... fluke that he's won a European Championship. It's not a fluke that Portugal did that. Like mm. he is a very good right back, and it's just about getting the performances out of him until the end of the season. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with that. However, I think there is still ability for there. I think our, our, our wing backs like Bertrand. Is still performing well, but you look at it now and you think centre midfield is pretty much nailed on now. We've got a really good partnership there. Danny Ings is on fire up front, and you look at we've got players that can move in and around that. If you want a target man, Shane Long can go up there. If you want a bit of pace and energy, Obafemi's there. If you want a, a bit more power around there, you've got Che. We've got a nice amount of exchangeable wingers there, so it's it becomes unpredictable. Whereas I think our wing backs. There's no surprises there, and they're decent performances, but they're by no means great performances. They're just good at the moment, and that that's it's okay where we can moment. improve the most. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Put it perfectly yeah. there. It's where we can improve the most. Yeah, uh, I'd maybe say we probably need another midfielder, uh, just Wherever. just for cover, because mm. the problem is if one of Hoiberg or Warprouse gets injured, we got Romeo, and that's it. We don't yeah. have another central midfielder to bring in. Um, Would you argue that you could put? In, you... I prefer to bring in a left back than a right back because that's really, yeah. Sorry, uh, Bertrand has no cover. Bertrand gets injured, we've got no one there, and that's why Kevin Dancer was playing there earlier this season when Bertrand was sent off because we yeah. had no one there. While if Cedric's out, Valerie can step in. Um, that's true. I, it depends. Be it depends where Jake Vokens is in his development. If Vokens is ready, then we probably shouldn't sign a left back. Left yeah. back progress like and get it seems like we've had a bit of a standstill with our youth development because you'd you'd think set you know you've got two midfielders at the moment Romeo if there's an injury and you'd be saying you know hopefully there should be a, a some sort of uh, midfielder in the ranks that hopefully should be able to kind of step in and the same with right back we've got Valerie and Vokin's left back that's always been our system that if there is a a space available to be filled that should really be filled by the the youth so that they can give a you know step in if they're needed and if they perform well they can build into the team well there, um, there are players that because you've got Callum Slattery who I, I don't know if he's still playing for the under 23s or not but mm. he's he's probably the most likely to get a role as a defensive midfielder if one of Hoiberg or Warprouse gets injured yeah. Will Smallbone mm. was on the bench last week uh, against Palace so he's doing well in his development too so yeah. there are 
options there, but I don't know if like because if they're not being played now or not even making the bench now, yeah, I don't know how they'd feel. I tell you what, Hudd- Huddersfield might be a really interesting to see. Obviously, there is going to be rotation because the Leicester fixture is very important. So it will be interesting to see who's, you know, in the reserves or the substitutes, yeah. who is the who's relied on and who's seen as someone who could be used. I think we get, you know, like say, get given their chance. Exactly, yeah. You know, if Smallbone's given his chance, then we might be seeing more of him in the future. Yeah. Because obviously, Ralph's not going to play someone he's he's not going to trust. So we know we can get a really good indication from the Huddersfield game who we should kind of expect the reliance to come from. So, but it's yeah, like it's it's not going to be like a conveyor belt of youth players. We, I think it's quite generational of how it comes out. Because we had like all Prowse, Luke Shaw, Callum Chambers as a three that all came out together. Mm. Then we've had the likes of Harrison Reed, Sam Gallagher, Jake Esker. We're like they've all come through at the same time as well. Sam McQueen. Yeah. They've all had their chances and like have gone out alone or been sold. Yeah. So I think I think we're waiting for the next generation to come through and we'll have like four or five. So I, think, at the same time. I think they all push themselves, don't they? You think if you're marking Adam Lalana you're going to be a decent centre-back because you're going to be marking a good attacking midfielder in the games and training and things like that. Yeah. So I think if they push off each other, don't they? So yeah. we might be waiting for the next sort of generation to come through and fingers crossed. Can, well, what, um... what the good thing is, is that Will Smallbone's training with the first team. I think Vokens has been pictured training with the first team. Yeah. I think Dan Underloo as well has also been pictured. I'm really first. excited for Dan Yeah. They're all like coming through. They're all training with the players and they're all learning off the professional, like top professional players. So yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. should be should be quite exciting. And hopefully. this this club is built around youth players playing for the first team. I mean, I, I went and saw the training ground and they built the the pitches on the closeness to the uh, Marcus Lieber Pavilion. If yeah. you're the in, if you're in the first team, you're closest to the pavilion, and you're you're at the the first team bit, and the furthest where you are. So it sets targets, and those players are meant yeah. to come through the youth rank and get into well, that, that first team. That's how the dressing rooms are set up. So you have yeah. like the under twelves, under fourteens, under sixteens, and it's sort of mm. down to the first team. And the further you go down the corridor, exactly, yeah. Because what it's meant to be is the target is for the youth players to get into that first team, because yeah. you don't have to sign expensive Europeans, or you don't have to. Uh, you know, uh, take chances on players from uh, smaller leagues. It's it's um, people from the youth team, and you know that can build up and go through the different stages and get to that first team. You think about if if we know it's sort of like you could scout a player and have six months of knowledge on them, yeah. or a player's been in there since he was twelve. Mm. <laughs> yeah, got youth ranks there. You have a lot more knowledge about that player and what that player can do. Yeah, than definitely. A that you've looked at for six months. Mm. So I think that's that's. I'm. Um, this has gone completely off the top. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, have, yeah. I mean, is there if there's anything you guys want to mention because we have gone completely off the rails. But <laughs> to be fair, we do this on most of the. Uh, if it's an exciting game, it promotes us to talk about the things we're interested in. Like if it's a ball draw and we have to just go through every single point in the game, I, I, there's not much to talk about. But we can actually, you know, I'm excited for this team. This is an exciting team to watch, and there's. You know, we're finally seeing players fulfilling their potential, and I want to talk about it. So it may not be as structured; it might be <laughs> completely all over the place. But you know, we're passionate about this side. You know, we're all fans; we're all interested in this team, and we're all finally seeing it come together. So well, it's all over the place. Cool. But you know, one of the most positive things to take from it is that the core of the squad, like this core right now, McCarthy and goal is solid and he'll be yeah. around for the next five years, hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah. if he doesn't make a mistake or have an absolute howl or something like that. Stevens right. and Bednarek look solid and they look like a partnership now and they look like that they play together mm. and oh. can work together. Um, Hoiberg and Will Prowse, they've sort of switched on, they've developed together as well and they've got a good partnership. And Ings and Redmond... They seem to work all right at the moment. Ings well, even if you say Ings up front yeah. is the, the core yeah. and then Ings the wingers front. and a striker moves around that, you still got to say that is still a pretty strong um, core there as well. So mm. yeah, we're it's building that main core that we didn't really have. you, you got to see Ralph was probably experimenting for a long, long time to try and actually find what that was. 
And if you compare the the side which were given in performances at the end of last season to now, it's probably quite a lot different, isn't it? Really, because people well, were playing. No more start. Not uh, not starting anymore. Josh mm. Simmons hasn't really been given a chance to come back. He might get a chance at the Huddersfield game. Hopefully, he's an exciting player to play. I think uh, he's uh, only been. Sorry to interrupt. I think he's only now allowed to play because of it now being January. Yeah, because he's oh, only just come back. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 I, I might be completely wrong in that. But no, no, that's that's probably right. Well, also, the... McCarthy's earned his chance as well. Like you got to say, he's what we haven't seen for a long, long time is a a goalkeeper taking his command of the box. And I'd be really interested to see how many times McCarthy caught crosses today or mm, caught yeah. cross, uh, corners because he did it a lot of times and we've been crying out for that. Although Forster was a very good shot stopper, he didn't come out and collect those crosses, which takes a whole load of pressure off. Um, so again, that's another place where someone, that core is being built. So a Two claims yeah. in the box today and made five saves. Yeah. That's fair, that's fairly decent, isn't it? That's that, that's a, and the, did you ever feel really? I think McCarthy had a solid game. I don't think he looked particularly shaky. No, is uh, he had the it, one the one shot that he spilt, but they recovered very well. Um, exactly, the one yeah. Leading up to Delhi, that's all about, right? If he yeah. if he recovers afterwards, you can't complain at it because he's yeah. he's he's built up on it. And, and uh, that, that's something that's something that like we haven't had for a while. It's a goalkeeper that actually gets up quickly. Yeah, and, like he. And react to a mistake, get up quickly and make a recovery, which is okay. like sometimes our goalkeepers haven't been able to do when they have spilt the ball. Yeah, very true. Right, so we're getting on a bit. Is there any kind of final thoughts you guys have? Otherwise, we'll kind of wrap it up there. <sighs> going to win the league. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're obviously in very good spirits and we'll do a preview to the Huddersfield game as well. Have a little talk about that. I'm sure we can talk about the bits and bobs as well, Fantasy League, all those different things as well. Questions, all those things, but we're obviously in good confidence after that game. Very happy. Uh, we've also had, uh, it's the new year, we hit 2,000 plays, so we have to say thank you very much for that as well because we got there, the 2,000 plays, that was our target before the new year and we did get it. It was on the on the day, deadline day, but we did get it. <laughs> we got past the mark. Uh, you rewarded with the new uh, logo as well, so we've got a new logo coming out. Um, oh, it's out even. So uh, check sorry. that out. It looks pretty sick. Uh, it's got the old Saints Saints flag in it as well, which looks really nice. Uh, there may even be new merch with the new logo as well, so keep an eye out for that. But questions, reactions, all those things need to go through the Instagram now. Tizard, how can they get in contact with the Instagram? Saints Prime on the Instagram. I'll put out a question thing later today or tomorrow for the Huddersfield yeah. game. And then, what, mm. what's the Twitter, Ollie? The Twitter, well, we got, the Twitter is the place to be, really. You've got the reactions, you've got the uh, the thoughts, you've got the, uh, the links directly to the podcast whenever they come out. So, Make sure on that it's at Saints Prime Pod. I'll say that again. That's at Saints Prime Pod. Have a look on there. You'll get links direct to your favourite podcasting host. Not us, the podcasting host, podcast host. As <laughs> if you've got Apple, we're on Spotify, we're on Google Podcasts, we're on Breaker, we're on Radio Republic. You name it, we're on there. Go and have a look. Go check it out. There you go. There's the Twitter. We're all done there. It's been me, Ollie. I've also joined by. Harry. Harry. There you go. Right. And thank you. no Jamie. Hopefully we'll see him on the Huddersfield podcast. But well. tune in for that next time. Thank you very much for listening and your continued support. And we'll see you for the next one. See you later. <laughs>